Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they are growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. My guest today is Blaina Po, founder of Maui Crisps. Welcome to the show. So why don't we have you start off with uh, how you got started? Like, how did this whole thing get going? So basically, uh, we had an opportunity to take over a gas station, which is owned by my father-in-law, my wife's dad and um, try and turn it around due to uh, some unforeseen circumstances as like Costco opened up their own gas station there in Maui, which, right took, in a lot of the, yeah, yeah. which took a lot of the business away from uh, my father-in-law's gas station. So within trying to find new products and different ways to make money, um, we came across, we we're trying to make pipi kalo, it came across uh, the ends coming thin and dried after we cut them up and dehydrated them. Um, it, uh, hey, maybe we ought to something here and try to just perfect it. So we continued on that path and kind of steered away from the PP Kaula, which we actually set out to do and looked for the thin and crispy type of beef chips that now we have that's been popular. Cool. So you had to get kind of creative because no one was coming to the gas station anymore because the Costco rates are just like so ridiculously low. Yes, yes. So... So how did you start to market that you do, when you started doing the products? Like, did you have big signs out front? Or? So um, I actually started, I started with poke. We did poke. Never did advertise anything. Uh, just kind of went with what the customers uh, were purchasing at the time. Uh, so when we started giving samples of the beef chips or, uh, to the people coming into the gas station, they were buying beer and whatnot. So I figured it's like a poo-poo, you know, they're going to take it out. We started giving samples, and then the customer's feedback was just, hey, why don't you sell this? This is good. Where do you guys have it? So we kind of pursued that and followed their request, and basically they built it. I mean, it, we, it got to a point where we couldn't keep up with the demand, so we never did advertise because I didn't want to sell a sari to the customers. Um, so we just, it, it kind of just grew basically word of mouth where it went from. That's cool. Yeah. So, okay, so you said you started with pipi cola and then kind of poke, and then the ends were like crisping and the dehydrator. So how did you, so can you just share what is exactly Maui Crisps and how did that really come to be? So Maui Crisp is a, it's a thin slice of beef. So we take a whole round, we slice it thin, we marinate it, and then we de put it through a dehydrating process. And at the end, it has a texture of like a Pringles chip. So it's a crunch. But it's not fried, it's, it's dried, and it also has like a, uh, a burst of flavor as you're chewing through it. Um, it's easy to chew, it melts in your mouth. Uh, it's, it's, it's something like nothing, no other jerky that's out there right now. Uh, it's thin and crispy, I guess you could call it. <laughs> yeah, I love eating it because you feel like you're eating a lot, but then you're not. Because it's so thin, and then you like get that burst in your mouth, but it's like... It's super full of flavor, but then you don't get, like, my brain starts to, um, get, like, expand and feel like it gets numb when I eat too much jerky. Because I'm, like, chewing and chewing, and suddenly yeah. I feel my brain, it's all, like, this yeah, wide yeah. or something. Yeah. So, I, that, I love it. So this product is basically for all ages. I mean, up to the kupunas and young kids, everyone can eat it. Um, it's packed with protein. It's really light to carry on trips. Uh, it's a great gift for omiyagi, as a lot of people that come and support the gas station from off island and to take it back as a gift um, to their families or wherever it is. So yeah, it's been a truly blessing. That's awesome. So Penny, walk us through how, so you started in the gas station and obviously just demand just kept growing and growing. And you know, how did you then start to develop your manufacturing facility? Cause we were just over there and it's like this huge, awesome facility and how you've tweaked so many of the machines to exactly how you want it. Like, were you trained in all this? How, <laughs> how did all this come to be? Um, actually, no. So uh, we're at the gas station. We kind of maxed out on our, our area where we could put dehydrators. Uh, I, I took my office out of there, moved it to my house, put a dehydrator in my office, and we still couldn't keep up with demand. So at that point, I said, you know, we need to start looking to grow the, the operation and the production. Um, just so happened in the meantime, my father-in-law had been uh, putting up a building out in Waikapu. So he asked if we were looking to expand and get bigger, and I said, yeah. So we kind of started the design while he were, they were designing their building. Um, so 
took months of research, staying up late online and looking at all kinds of different equipment. Um, knowing what I was looking for, being doing it every day on my own uh, was kind of a, a big help to purchase this equipment that we got from so outside of the country. Um, so in 2016, we designed the facility. Well, 2015, we designed the facility. 2016, we, had a, we started to build it out. And then 2017 is where we're in now. So it is a fully um, functioning USDA certified facility, which has been in operation since 2017, yeah. So uh, as far as the equipment, the designing of the equipment, it was, we kind of tailored it. Not, there's no equipment, there's nobody doing this on a large scale. So there was nothing to base it off of on how we're gonna grow our production. So it was a lot of just looking at what we're doing currently and trying to grow it from there. Um, and then talking with the manufacturers and seeing if we can make adjustments to the machine to tailor it to our specific needs. And you were just in Vegas for what, what show was it where it was like a total like candy candy land of, of, yeah. of manufacturing? <laughs> yeah, so it was machinery. the uh, Pack Expo, uh, which is uh, there's two different shows. I guess it's in Vegas and um, Orleans, New Orleans or something. But uh, basically, it's this, uh, a huge show of packaging equipment for any type of industry, food industry, medical fields, whatever it is. So we were just up there. Uh, it's our first time at the show, and we're looking to automate our production. So we needed to take a step further and go, go outside and look and see what's out there and what we can find to help us with that specific need uh, because that is one of the areas of the production that's kind of bottleneck there in the production room where everything we have right now is all hand packaged in our current situation. And that's kind of a bottleneck in terms of like labor is, is challenging to get yeah, access to? Yeah, labor, um, labor is one. Uh, the second one is just to grow bigger than this, it's gonna be hard to find uh, a consistent volume coming off of manual labor. There's people, you know, they might not come to work or whatever it is, um, but that is the bottleneck due to the time constraints on, on manually packaging all these products. Um, so. We figured that that was one specific area of the production facility that we needed to make sure we could automate eventually at some point and in order to grow to the next level. Have you guys been able to take advantage of the MAP grant with Innovate Hawaii? And can you share what, with our audience what that yes, is? Yes, so um, we did in 2000, I believe, um, 2016 or something like that. Um, I met Wayne from Innovate. And he was at my gas station just looking to purchase some bags of jerky and introduce himself. And I was unfamiliar of any grants at the time. Um, so got us on board, sent us some emails with the application. We filled out the application and uh, it, it was a big help. That manufacturing grant, I mean, it's for any food manufacturing company out there, which everyone should, that's involved in food manufacturing should take advantage of. Um, go check it out, Google it. I don't have the exact website. I think where it's what, 20%? Huh? Yeah, Is so I think accepted? it's up to a hundred thousand dollars they give you, um, twenty percent of your total investment or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but specific needs, it has to be specific to making your product different. Like it has to tailor to why your product is unique. So, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's it's a grant that everyone should take advantage of for sure. So you got started. People start liking your stuff, and it's so different because it is like a beef chip. How how have you marketed? what this product is because obviously there's like a huge education of like it's not a jerky but it's not a chip so what has been some of the more like effective marketing or education that you guys have done so um a lot of it came from doing uh trade shows or not trade shows like pop-up events so we do like the made in maui festival which was a uh, one of the festival our first festival our first event that we actually ever did which we sold out i think in like six or eight hours of the event um two years in a row we had sold out there but a lot of the marketing we did was just face to face with the consumer um, sampling. You know, it's kind of like throwing out some hollow in the water for fish, you know, give them some little chum and they'll come around. And once they try it, it's, hey, yeah, it's really good, you know, but just to try and get these people to try it, it's like beef chips. Like, really, what is that? No one's ever heard of it. So marketing has been basically more face to face, one on one with people uh, and try to do that. Cool. Um. What about your, uh, your flavors? What have been some of, like, you started with the original, which is, you can share what that is, and then what has been kind of from there, and where, where are you at now? So, yeah, the original was just something, um, some random 
mix that I threw together and try to tailor it over to, uh, to my picky uh, taste buds. And then from that, we just based it off of the, that original flavor. And then we did a cracked pepper, uh, Hawaiian chili. And then I felt, okay, what well, does in the jerky industry, there's the teriyaki flavor. So we came up with a teriyaki sauce. We did a, a furukake sprinkled on that. And then also a uh, spicy teriyaki. So since then, um, we've incorporated a new product, product line that we came out with recently is for our fruit line, mm -hmm. our fruit crisp. So we have uh, pineapple crisp, lean pineapple crisp, and a banana, uh, all cut thin, all crispy. It's like basically everything we produce out of our plant is thin and crispy. Uh, so, and then now recently, uh, we got a opportunity to get some grass-fed beef in there and Starting to play around with some grass-fed flavors, but uh, basically it's just trial and error and taste testing. So it feels like you're like this culinary like chef, and you're also this like engineer understanding machinery. Did you you know go to school for like thirty years prior to starting this company, or like what were you doing before starting my Christmas? You're wearing so many hats. <laughs> um, a lot of building Legos when I was young, taking <laughs> apart remote control cars and figuring out how they work is kind of where it stemmed from. Um, but yeah, I went to school to be a, for automotive and welding, so it's completely opposite of this. Um, it's just just a grind. I mean, just trying to prove to yourself that you can do it, um, doing as much research as you can, and I don't know. It's just a passion of mine to always build things. So constantly wanted to look into different stuff. I mean, I get old, of, I, I get tired of doing things really quick. So it's kind of perfect for me with this, this type of business. Can you, can you talk a little bit about, um, obviously it takes a village and you've got some great family. Um, can you talk about the different roles that, that family is playing with the company? Yes, yeah, so, um, so my wife is at the gas station running that, uh, that operation there. I'm up at the plant. Um, I brought my brother, my brother was in the military. He came out, got, got out of the military, so he's now um, about over a year. We trained him, got him prepped up, so he's running my, he's a production manager. I've got my mom in there. Uh, she's retired, but she comes back and helps. She does, she wants to do something, so she floats around. And then I got my brother, uh, my older brother, that's down on the floor um, in the cutting room and making sure the process is, is going to Taylor. But, yeah, it's it's, it's a lot of, a lot of, it's when they say it's a family run business, it is a family run business. Majority of the employees are and family and that's kind of our backbone of where we started, you know, that's, that's who's going to help you build your company. And you have three kids, right? Three kids, so yeah. Now they're going to start you know, filling in <laughs> yeah, some roles. Yeah, so, <laughs> so when they're off from school, they come in and help. Although the two older ones, my younger daughter, she's too young to do it. So, but trying to instill that in my kids that, hey, you know, this, this is something to look forward to in the future, you know, they want, they want to. So Kate will be a worker, but if you can be your own, uh, own your own business in that, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's, it's worth it. You know, you can, you can feed a lot of people's mouths. You can make everyone happy. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a quick break. Um, when we get back, we're going to learn more about what's next for Maui Crisps and where people can find you and all the other awesomeness that's happening um, with, the, with the near future with this company. Sure. Thanks, Thank Blaine. you. Ready. Aloha, I'm Catherine Knorr, and I'm the host of Much More on Medicine on Think Tech Hawaii. We talk about medical issues, and I interview guests regarding medical matters, and I'm really excited about upcoming guests. I hope you join us every other Wednesday at 3 p.m. Aloha, and see you then. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to join us on Wednesdays at one o'clock for Cannabis Chronicle, the 10,000 year odyssey, where we take a look at cannabis as food, cannabis as medicine, cannabis and religion, and cannabis and dear old Uncle Sam. So please join us to learn all about cannabis. Again, Wednesdays at one o'clock. I thank you. Welcome back. I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. And with me today, we're returning back with Blaine Apo, founder of Maui Chris. Thanks, Blaine, for being here. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we were just kind of getting into um, growth of the company. 
Um, you guys got started in the gas station, just natural growth with people just absolutely loving your stuff, building off the machinery, you know, going to Vegas, finding more machinery and increasing growth and, and building your facility. So, so what's next? So next, um, what we're trying to do is uh, we are trying to spread our wings and reach outside of the country. Um, so we've started a process, which is a lengthy process to try and get into Japan. Um, there's a lot of hurdles and challenges, I guess you could say, to getting in there. Um, it is a very tight uh, uh, country to get into. Uh, so we're just taking the steps right now. As So we're about halfway there to the process of getting our acceptance into Japan. But I feel um, it's always been a dream of mine. Uh, I, I don't know why, but it's just from when I first started making the jerky and Everyone said, oh, yeah, you can go big with it. You can go big with it. And that was always my vision. I want to go to Japan. For some reason, I want to go to Japan. Yeah. Well, it kind of makes sense. I mean, Japan has just been such a kind of a sister country to, to Hawaii. Yes, I guess. yes. Um, and, and you've got quite a bit of practice. I mean, you know, looking at some of the collaborations you've had and the growth um, in retail and, and, and e-commerce, um, how has that really developed for you? And, and what are some of the things you've learned? So, yeah, um, doing collaborations. We did some collaboration with Sig Zane. Um, what did, was that? That was that? Uh, uh, for happened? Mary Monarch. Oh, cool. Yeah, so basically I wanted to give back to the community um, and support the people that's holding up uh, our Hawaiian culture. So we did a giveaway with them in Hawaiian Alliance. They designed some bags. Hawaiian Alliance uh, allowed us to distribute the bags to the, to the customers. Uh, as a thank you to the Maui Halals, since we're from Maui, we filled up a whole plane with the two Halals and gave it all, gave all, each person a bag of jerky. How many bags? Uh, I want to say it was about 130 something bags uh -huh. I think we gave away that, on that flight. And then, um, but yeah, collaborations, um, there's been a lot of uh, trying, to, trying to mix it up with local, like Sheldon Simeon, we're trying to do something with him. Um, Manelli Spice Company, we're trying to use some of their spice, so trying to just get the local us to get together or companies to get together and, and, and grow together you know I help everybody has to help each other out i like how the local brothers are getting together <laughs> and that, they're all mana up companies right yeah all mana up companies yeah so mana up has been a huge uh, uh blessing for us uh we've been a part of this accelerator program or cohort four uh, thank you so it's it's opened all kinds of doors to us um being being by myself kind of trying to grow this company um back with my workers uh, I don't have access to like marketing. I was never involved in sales or anything like that. So this has opened the door and, and allowed us to meet all different kinds of companies and, and have access to marketing, professional sales, and, and get that extra help that we need to grow to the next level, which is awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, it's in terms of retail locations, uh, where, where can people find you? So you can find us at, uh, we're in ABC stores, uh, Don Quixote's, we've recent, recently started launching with uh, Fuland Farms. So we are in the Ala Moana, there's Kauai, uh, the brand new store out in uh, Pro City and on the Big Island. Um, our gas station, of course, on Maui, where it all started. Um, go check it out in Kahului. Is, is there a full... Um a cutout of you in the store people can take pictures with? Oh, no, yeah. <laughs> we got to work on <laughs> Real that. Real life size, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so there, um, you can also go to our website, uh, www.mauicrisps.com. Uh, a lot of people tend to forget the S at the end of crisp. So it is crisps. Crisps.com. <laughs> um, other than that, yeah, we're at various gas stations across the state. On the Big Island, there's a store called Big Island Beef Jerky who sells abundant supply of beef jerky from across the nation. Um, we got gator jerky there. They got all kinds of different stuff. So um, if you're on any island, I'm sure you'll be able to find our product. If not, go to our website and we have all the locations where we're at. Okay. What's well, been, you know, obviously being a small business in Hawaii is challenging and then even more so probably on Maui as opposed to Oahu. What have been some of the, the biggest kind of hurdles that you guys have overcome or, or or uh, what have been some of the biggest lessons you've learned? Um, so starting in the beginning, it uh, basically, it, it, there was a, such a demand for, uh, huge demand for it. I, I would call it my pillars I forgot to put up before I set the building up. My foundation wasn't there. Um, it just was, it just kind of flew in my face super quick. So there's a lot of learning experience trying to grow the business to the next step. Um, the USDA for sure was one of the huge hurdles to get through. Uh, there's no 
And at the time, I didn't know where to access any help to get the application going. So it was like turning your application and then they're like, oh, it's incomplete. You ask them, well, what's, what's missing? And I'll go to the Code of Federal Regulations. The book's like about 800 pages long. And you got to find for yourself. So, but it just made me stronger. It, 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 it actually was a blessing because it made me learn every little thing, every little avenue I had to go through. I've been through it. I haven't hired somebody to do it for me. So, um, but yeah, there's, a, there's been a lot of... Um, hiring employees, dealing with employees. I mean, it's, it's from doing it myself, and it, it's been a huge change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Would you give any um, uh, advice for people starting up their business? Or they've got an idea, or they're just getting started um, that could have maybe helped you a little bit yeah. if you learned this early on? Yeah. So there are programs out there that, you, that uh, new food businesses or any new companies that can take advantage of small business development. Um, now seeing all this stuff, uh, colleges, community colleges have programs that they can help you uh, create your food product and, and perfect it and make sure it's shelf stable or whatever you want to do. Um, basically, believe in your heart. Uh, anything you want to do in life, you can. it's possible. You just got to be able to grind it out and commit to it. It's a lot of work, but it's not impossible. Anything is possible. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't um, agree with that more. I think we you know at Mana Up, we've just at so many awesome entrepreneurs and you you being definitely one of them <laughs> and just really impressed with you know that you didn't get trained at all this but yeah. you're having all these different hats and just literally like stepping up to whatever the challenge yeah. is that, that's needed yeah you it's, know it's it's been a wild ride yeah i must say it's every little obstacle um i used to listen to billy kinoy's speech at the hpu graduation and it's uh his thing was uh, any obstacle or hurdle is meant to go over, around, or through. So I always kept that in the back of my head as, as a saying, like, okay, it, it's possible. Just fine. There's got to be a way to do it. If other people are doing it, but uh, so access to help, I mean, strongly advise. Look at all the avenues you can get help with. Set your plans. Uh, make sure you have a goal in mind, which I kind of just f shot from the hip along the way, but now we're kind of in that stage. So if I can give advice, yeah. Look, seek, seek help, as much help as you can get. There is grants. There is um, a lot of free help out there. So take advantage of it. You mentioned Billy Kunoy. Do you have any other, um, I guess, uh, business people or heroes or people that inspire you, whether they're local or not local? Um, my father-in-law, he's, uh, he's always um, kind of gave us the rope, gave us the kind of the, freedom at the station to make a decision all while sitting back and as soon as you make a little hiccup and he's right there to correct he's like hey why didn't you help me out before that but i think he kind of like steered us in a way to get on our own feet and, and and grow from that so yeah he's he's a he's a super inspiration to me i mean he's done it for 40 something years so i always think of it as just be a sponge soak in whatever you can soak in from all these knowledgeable businessmen and then when it's time for your turn to decide, make a decision in your own company, then you can squeeze out whatever you want to squeeze out. But at least you have all that water in that sponge, the knowledge in that sponge built up. So that's just the path I always took and never let me down. So, yeah. I like that. In terms of growth of the company, um, are you, what would be your next hire? Or are you hiring now? And if not, looking at kind of the team, what would be your next hire? So right now, we're trying to put together a, a long uh, strategic plan. Uh, but at this point, it's uh, something to do with marketing. Someone in marketing that could help me along the way with that. Um, somebody on the right hand that will stay within my company. Some, maybe a little graphic design to do like posters or events, pop-up little programs or whatever it is. But um, I think that's the next step we're gonna, we have to take advantage of uh, along with some accounting somewhere there but yeah the marketing for sure is some is a mark is is an is a tool in a business that we have never tapped into or used yet so i think there's a lot to grow on that end yeah, i think for marketing i already have so many fun ideas of like contests you can do yeah. <laughs> the crisp and the, oh what was the line that you that you said um dried was is, is it that one the one you texted me? Oh, shoots, I forget. Wait, it's, I, I think it was thin and crispy, dried and not fried. Or. It was an alternative to beef jerky that won't hurt your jaw. Dried, not fried, like a potato chip. Yeah, I like exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Um, yeah, go ahead. It's a, it's, a unique, it's, it's a unique product. It's a very temperamental product. Um, because it's so thin, uh, a little too much cooking or a little too much sauce, it, it just it makes it become something else other than, other than what you're normally eating. So it's, it's a con constantly close monitored uh, product as we uh, send it through a process. Um, we have installed a uh, safety program where we data log everything from start to finish. So we know temperatures from when the raw beef enters our facility to when it's cut, marinated, cooked, and then bagged. So we have a track record. We have a lab on site, which we created to ensure the safety of the product. So before it leaves our facility, it's already have been, it has been tested. So there's no reason for us to even try and think of a recall. I just hear... It just makes me scared to hear about that word recall, so I don't want to get involved in that. But yeah, so we did that to ensure quality of our product, and every day testing keep, keeps us on top of it. Awesome. Yeah. My favorite flavor is the Italian, so anytime yeah. you're yeah. coming by Monaha, you can So that's our new Italian. line. We're, we're coming out with a grass-fed line. Um, there's been a lot of people asking questions about that, so uh, we're coming up with two flavors, an Italian and a lemon pepper grass-fed. Uh, we did some testing with some other, uh, a yuzu koshu flavor, which is like a citrus pepper flavor. So um, stay tuned for that. I don't know, we're, we're doing in the process of doing testing with it now, but for sure in the next few months, we'll be coming out with our grass fed line. That's uh, awesome. Yeah. What's the shelf life? Our shelf life is about six months for a product as far as quality. Um, it's been lab tested for a year for safety, but because if you buy the product at seven months, it won't be the same crispness mm -hmm. that you would get in the between one and six months so and it's due to not uh, not using a, like a sodium nitrate or any preservative I mean I'm, I'm trying to stay away from that and trying to keep it as clean as possible well I'm so excited for you I think you're just one of those entrepreneurs that's just such an executor <laughs> and that's something that we like seeing you. um, you've had a lot of great opportunities come your way and taken advantage of them um, and just learned everything you need to and just like you were saying, been a sponge. Yeah. Um, are there any last last things? Where, where can everyone find you? Um, you guys can find us at www.mauichris.com. You can go to our gas station, Eli Michelle, which is located 137 Calmont Avenue. Um, you can Google it, Yelp it. It's all up there for you. Um, other than that, yeah, thank you for having me on the show. All Appreciate right. it. Thanks, Blaine, and thanks, um, thanks for sharing your awesome journey so far and i can't wait to to keep keep up with you which i know i will already um and just see that growth really happening for maui which is awesome right on. thank right. you all right thanks for being here i'm melly with let's mana up aloha